Welcome back to Switched to Linux. So today we're just going to do a little quick preview of React OS 0.4.8. Uh, this one was just released. I've wanted to relook at React uh, for a little bit because I, I mean I'd heard they were making a lot of progress, and I really wanted to have a look at it. Now, according to the guys that are are real evangelists for React OS, if you really want the absolute best experience, you need to put it on bare metal. Um, you know, I don't have an extra hard drive laying around and I'm not throwing it on bare metal for, uh, for a quick review. Um, and, uh, I'm going to put it in a virtual box. We're going to have a look at it over there and we're going to be able to get, get a chance to, to see just, just kind of the, the gif of what we got here. So, um, let's just go ahead and, and start by just having a look at the website itself. Um, and so here is their main website. Um, and, and it says down here, I got a kick out of this looking at their new site here. Um, you know, React OS, even if we're just alpha, this thing has been alpha since like the XP era and uh, like beginning of XP era. So this is like 20 year old operating system, still in alpha. So it's kind of become a meme that it is in alpha and it will probably remain al in alpha until the end of the world comes. Um, it is a collaborative operating system. Basically, it is an operating system that, that essentially uh, mimics a 32-bit type operating system. Some people might say, well, 64-2. Uh, we're going to get into that. We're just going to have a look. Um, so features, there's lightweight. Um, uh, it's not Linux mimicking Windows. So they say it's from scratch. So so it, it is an impressive project. Basically, they're they're working on kind of reverse engineering how the Windows system works. And of course, how much, how difficult that is combined with how much Windows changes, that's why it doesn't follow and track Windows well. You can't really blame it much for that. You know, nine million lines of code and growing and a, over a hundred devs have contributed over the years. Uh, it is a system out of Russia, uh, if you're curious about that. So you actually have a couple different themes. I think the adding the new theme, I think is something new and actually it looks pretty slick. Uh, there's a lot of open modules, a lot of things ready to go. And you can actually try it on a live CD or you can grab a boot CD. You need to make sure that you download which one you're, you want. You can't install off the live um, and uh, you, can't, um, you can't try it on the install. So that's kind of something to keep in mind. Um, so there's a lot of, a lot of references there to, to who's been talking about it. And there's, of course, been a lot of, a lot of discussions about it uh, over the years. Um, here's restalling. There's FAQs. There's a lot of uh, a lot of different information. Um, see forums, shop, download. So if you go to the downloads page, uh, you can either grab the boot CD or grab the live CD. I downloaded the boot CD, so I installed this on a virtual box, and I went ahead and already played with this a little bit, uh, just to just kind of see how it is. So what we're going to do here next is we're going to have a look at a couple of other considerations, um, uh, just a few other considerations in the system. So I want to show you a few things. Okay, so the first thing, if you want to try this out, and I would always encourage you to download a copy and try it out on a virtual machine if you have the option. One of the things that you need to do in order to get this working is you need to change your network adapter down here. Uh, the, the general default one that I always use, so you know the Intel Pro desktop adapter, which is kind of the default, that doesn't work. It'll give you a prompt to install, and then you wouldn't be able to get on the internet, and then you really are kind of stuck. You can't do much else. So in order to do that in the virtual box, you just want to come up to your uh, settings, and unfortunately that doesn't give us our window, so I'm going to have to change my view here real quick. There we are, that'll work. Okay, so you got to pull up your window here, come down to your network, and then under advanced, you want to pull this down. So this is kind of the default here. Uh, there's a few different ones there. You just need to change this to PC Net Fast 3 on the virtual box. That will enable it to install the uh, network drivers without any issues at all. So that's what you do need to do if you're trying this out on VirtualBox. Make sure you change your, uh, change your network on that. Is that right, Kitty? That's right. Change your network adapters. Thank you, Kitty. All right. There you go, bud. Kitty is going to join me for a little bit. So you will probably see a furry snake. <laughs> All right. 
All right, so now that that is, uh, that is set, we're just gonna go ahead and start our machine. It should boot up really quick. All right, let's, uh, I think, I think I was gonna run it a little smaller. Let's, so you see it's kinda, I mean, it kind of looks just like an old Windows, and that's kind of the, the appeal to it. If you like that old, old look, you can do that. Um, I'm gonna make sure that we are as large as we can get without, um, without losing anything. I think that that's better. And I do apologize for the size of the font. I have not found a way to increase the font size. Uh, I thought there was, um, uh, there should be basically you have a control panel just like Windows. Um, and even I even look under accessibility and there was no way that I saw to increase the fonts. I can change the contrast to high contrast, um, in which case it will pull in, in theory, a high contrast theme, but I'm not seeing any themes in there, so I'm not sure that works. Um, but I can't change the size of the fonts. I wanted to increase the size of the fonts, and so if it is possible to do that, I don't know how. And I also did notice a few of the buttons and things are a little bit, uh, a little bit fuzzy. Um, this will uh, have a, the the remnants of, uh, you know, of an old. Windows control panel. So anything is pretty much where you want. So this is where you'll kind of see how you kind of look at the buttons seem a little fuzzy. Um, computer name, hardware, profile. So it's pretty much uh, what you'd anticipate. Um, under display, we have under appearance, this is where you can pick the classic theme if you want to look more like an old Windows 98 type look. Um, or you can grab the um, you can go in and grab the new theme. And then there's, oh, okay, hey, look at that. L extra large font sizes. I didn't even think to check there. Um, okay, well, our extra large font sizes uh, aren't all that much larger. I don't actually think that did anything. <laughs> Should we try that over here? Let's try large font sizes. It's changing the font size up in the corner. So I can go through here and change all these. It does appear that changing font sizes does not actually do anything. Let me see if the classic theme font size changes occur. Now I only have default font size there. I do have a variety of colors I can choose on my classic theme. If I can't do anything different with the font sizes, let's just go ahead and do that one. All right, so uh, my apologies. Apparently I can't change the font sizes even though there is an option to do extra large fonts that does not seem to do anything. Uh, and that's kind of the reminiscence of how the system works. It really it really doesn't, it's an, it's an interesting proof of concept, um, but in general it, it feels like it's, I, I don't know what it feels like. Uh, it just kind of feels old and this is one of those cases where do we want to have an old system just because we missed the good old days or are we looking to actually run something? So what I did is uh, first you can actually um, come in and install applications. So once your internet connection is working, there is an applications manager here. Um, and again, though, one of the issues is things like Audacity is already installed. And you'll see that I have the option to click it and install it again. And so I don't have a nice feedback system to say what's already installed. Like this doesn't seem to tie into your, uh, your operation at all. Um, and so there's things like I installed Audacity, I installed Audio Grapper, uh, or Audio Grabber, excuse me. I installed, I installed Winamps in the list. I installed that. So there's a lot of different applications in here. I went through and installed a, a series of things, uh, but one of the things that I found is that the even the installation of the applications is somewhat inconsistent. Some of them asks you and what versions you'd like, 
what languages you would like. And so, you know, like LibreOffice, it says, you know, which, which one do you want? Here's Audacity. Clearly, we can read this. But then I go to test out Audio Grabber, and it's some foreign language. So uh, this was actually the system we used to use back in the old Windows day. So I kind of know what all the buttons do, but... I can't really read much. <laughs> so, um, Steam is inside the repository. Uh, you can install it, but it doesn't actually work. Um, I'm sure there's. It's probably a library issue. I need to install some type of library. Uh, something. You need to figure out something to do with it. But Steam is not working in theory. This, of course, would be the Windows version of Steam. Uh, here's your Winamp, of course. So if you do like Winamp, you have that. It's sending, what are you sending user information for? I don't want you to send user information. Um, again though, it's, uh, remember that? Y'all remember that? Oh, it's so gorgeous, I love it. <laughs> um, and uh, sound isn't working for me. Again, some of these are because we're in a virtual box. So I'm not gonna criticize things like the sound as much. Uh, you can get it to work. Uh, it's like Windows, though. You got to fight with drivers. Linux, you don't got to fight with drivers as much. Um, I did encounter the same problem with Warcraft. Um, it will be prompting you uh, eternal, eternally for the CD-ROM. Um, I didn't bother to go online downloading all of the updates and pushing all the updates. I did want to test three different things. The software I know works, the software that, that I know works but doesn't display well, and the software that won't install. And I tried all that. Um, everything behaves exactly as wine. And so I got my software to, you know, the one I expected to work, worked. Actually, the other two didn't. The one that should install correctly but doesn't display correctly, that doesn't actually install. Um, and then, uh, of course, the last one, as expected, didn't install at all. Um, we do have... Um, I guess this is where it downloaded all the uh, stuff to. Let's uh, run the Steam setup again. Let's. Uh, so here is where we can choose our language. We're just going to try it again. Run Steam, and it's probably not going to do anything. So I went through and I installed a series of different packages that I thought it might um, might be needing. Uh, you can actually grab those from inside of your uh, React OS application manager. There is a spot for these down in uh, uh, libraries, so you can just grab the packages. So I figured I'd try like the Gecko Engine, um, .NET Frameworks. I put the latest to that. I put the latest uh, VBR. Um, just the, a variety of different things that I thought Steam might need to run. Uh, Adobe Air. Um, I think the Java runtime environment, I think, didn't work. It didn't install. So uh, there's a lot of, I mean, there's a lot of this where it feels very clunky. It feels very old. It just kind of feels like you're running an operating system in that's Wine installed. And that's essentially what you have. Uh, that was kind of my criticism before about React OS is, um, despite I know a lot of people really like it, um, and it's, you know, it's okay. If you need something and you don't need a full Linux system to run an old Windows application you have, this is probably a good logical choice to go. If you're looking for adding, a, you know, running a Windows program that, you know, might be a little older of a Windows program, I'd rather just use Linux and play on Linux or one of the other uh, Wine compatibility, you know, Windows compatibility layers. And the reason is I'm not... I, I'm not all that interested in the look of this. I mean, it looks like the old Windows XP, Windows 95. This theme is a whole lot nicer than they've been. But I'm not wanting that type of system from the appearance look necessarily. I'm warn wanting something that is functional. And that's kind of what I feel like we're missing a little bit. Um, to me, before uh, I've looked at this before, looking at it now, it's... I cannot do anything with this that I can't do with Wine on a Linux distro. And so if I'm going to have the functionality just like Wine, I may as well just install install it on top of a Linux distro where I can install a lot of other applications. So, of course, I have LibreOffice on here, uh, but I can install LibreOffice natively on, um, on other applications. I think I installed GIMP as well. Let's see. Yeah, there's GIMP.
It does seem to run pretty slow. Um, I know it is a virtual box, but this virtual box itself is pretty beefy, so um, it does seem to run run fairly slow. Let's see. And I got the I got the hour class of the hour glass of impending doom here. So despite it's open, I can't do anything with it. And it looks like the system's frozen on me. So there's kind of my um, kind of my little takeaway. Uh, React OS, it's not horrible. It's um, it's not specifically a distro that, like, it's not, it's not a Linux distro. That's something to keep in mind. It is built up from the framework. It's very impressive. They've done a lot of good things. It's definitely something to keep an eye on, especially if they can figure out how to run, you know, newer, more modern applications. As it is, as I said, every bit of software uh, that I have tested, I there's nothing I can't do with this, or there's nothing I can do with this that I cannot do putting Wine on top of Linux. And so I'm not sure I see it as a significant thing in the in the field. However, I really like what they're doing. I like their approach. It's not a Linux distro. For people that do want something that's a little bit more pure, it is definitely more pure than, than a Linux distro is. Um, so that's kind of my thoughts. That's kind of my take. Uh, looks like my opinion hasn't really changed. I did tell uh, some people before, you know, I'll think about running, uh, running a... Um, uh, putting this on bare metal sometime and and build one out. That's what people are saying. I, I just uh, Show me a proof of concept that it's worth my time and I'll do it But if all I'm doing is spending all that time to build an equivalent of Windows XP It's not worth it. It's not worth it. That's for me personally. If you're a hobbyist, you're a tinkerer This is a great thing to play around with. This is a, a great system to you know, a great system to play with, great system to look at, and it's very impressive what the team has done. Uh, so go check it out uh, if you got, uh, uh, if you uh, you can put it on a on a little USB key to to play with it on a live key. You can install it on a virtual box if you have a spare hard drive laying around. Install it on a spare hard drive. Spend the time get get stuff going. See if you can get some newer applications running or some other applications running that don't necessarily run on Wine. Uh, that would be a uh, a neat concept. See if you can get done. So that's kind of my thought about React OS. Um, let me know what you think about it. Uh, is it good? Is it not good? Is it, you know, otherwise uh, problematic? I don't know. I, and I don't think it's bad at all. Uh, it's just not one that, uh, not one I see a lot of personal use for me for. You know, if I need a Windows application, I can run a Windows system. Um, I can run Windows in a virtual box. I can run Wine on Linux. Those are the things that I do personally. Uh, but definitely go check this out. It is a it is a cool uh, a cool concept, cool thing that they're doing. If you'd like to help support the channel, check out switchtolinux.com forward slash support. Um, there you can learn about all the different ways you can help support the channel. I do have some t-shirts, mouse pads, things like that available at shop.switchtolinux.com. And I do have a Patreon page, patreon.com forward slash Tom M. So thanks for watching, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.